Welcome to Ebull, Every Buy Owner Lists, brought to you by Annie Mac Works. Today's class will be a combination of pre-written slides and screen share, which means that your screen will change a bit during today's broadcast. During screen share portion, I will not be able to see text chat, so please bear with me and I will get to any questions that are asked. I recommend that you interact with me and ask me questions so that you're not left without a full understanding. It is my expectation that once we're finished with today's class that you will be able to participate in a contest that we have instituted and you will be able to earn more money based on selling for sale by owners. When you're working with eBull or for sale by owners, really when you're working with any different sphere or source of business, it's all about efficiency. And efficiency is brought with it competency. So once you've achieved the comp competency in performance, hopefully you'll become way more efficient in dealing with these people who think that they can do your job. I'm a former school teacher and every parent in the world thought that they could do a better job than me because they went to school so they thought they knew what they were doing. It's much like what you deal with. Everybody lives in a house so everybody thinks they can sell their own house. Only the smart and educated consumers realize that they need you, the professional, in order to do the job well. So it's your job with Ebull or for sale by owners to convince them that they understand that they need a professional to do the job so that they can get the highest possible price. Throughout today's presentation, you'll see some quotes. I'm not going to read every single one of them, but I expect and hope that you'll read them for yourself. And I want you to take a look at this one from Eleanor Roosevelt that says, My experience has been that work is almost the best way to pull oneself out of the depths. There are for sale by owners all over your marketplace. If you work at them, and you follow the efficient systems that we've put into place, you can add sales to your bottom line. You can add GCI to your yearly income. So let's talk about where else you can use the competencies that you'll earn here today. It's not just for buy owners. It, you can use it for absentee owners. You can use it for list pendants. You can use it for, it's all cro it all crosses over. So I'm going to teach you things here that you can use. But you also need to have the proficiency in telemarketing. And if you choose to do door hangers in 2015, which we find are still very effective, by the way, we want you to be able to have the proficiency in this but also be able to use it in other aspects of your business. You know, from 1986 to 2006, 180, 150 agents proved the 10 to 1 system. I have to tell you that we expect that you're going to make contact with 10 for sale by owners to get one listing. And it's all a numbers game, guys. It's not an emotional game. It's a numbers game. Some will, some won't. But at least one of the ten people that you come in contact with as a for sale by owner will decide and smarten up enough to list with you. On the Annie Mac Works website, we have all of the documents that you'll need, and I'm going to show you that when we go to the screen sharing portion, but I want you to know that everything that we do here at Annie Mac Works teaches you how to spend a dime and make a dollar. And the neat thing about it is that we're not asking for any pennies of that dime here. Everything is brought to you by your lender, and we're asking you to spend a dime on your own stuff.
So let's take a look. An initial contact is free. The letter one that I'm going to go over with you might cost 64 cents. The specific note is pricey in its nature for at $1.35 and goes on and on. So your total marketing cost for, for the system that we're showing you is approximately $5.39 per contact, which makes each listing that you take about $53.90. But think about that. If you can return a GCI of $5,300, I think spending that dime to make that dollar is well worth it. Would you agree? Every buy owner lists is grand in nature. So maybe we should change the name of the class to one in 10 buy owner lists. But the highest paid agents in the industry really understand that they all list eventually. Step one, you'll find your for sale by owner prospects. There's a few different ways that you can find it. You can find it on forsalebyowner.com. You can find it in your local newspaper. You can also drive neighborhoods. One cool thing that you can do is give your friends and family members a clipboard or instruction that they should text you whenever they see a for sale by owner in a neighborhood. They text you the address and the phone number and boom, it started. In the old days we had clipboards because texting wasn't as big. But a text network of your friends and family will work wonders for you because they'll start the process rolling for you. So your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, even your children. I was riding my bike the other day in a neighborhood across from me across from me and saw two for sale by owners that were in a $700,000 neighborhood. It was gated. How much traffic do you think that they're going to get? I turned to Russ and I said, you want to make an extra $30,000 this month? Let's institute evil on these people and list these houses. That's a true story, actually. You can also find them at buyowner.com. Now, these people spent a little money to put themselves here, but they cannot do the job as much as they think they can. There are a plethora of buy owner websites that people are that people try to employ when trying to sell their home themselves. So, all of these different places are great places for you to find it. But one of my favorites is the Red X. The Red X costs money, but it does the work for you. So you don't have to employ your text network or employ your sphere of friends. The Red X will allow you to search for for sale by owners, and it will give you, excuse me, and it will give you their phone number, their property address, how much they're selling their home for, and it will go and search all of those different sites for you. So if you choose to sign up for the Red X, I don't get a I don't need you to put in any promo code or anything cuz there's nothing in it for me other than the fact that I highly recommend the Red X and it was something that we employed uh towards the end of our real estate career because the clipboard got a little cumbersome. So the step 2 in for sale by owners is making that initial contact. That flip phone, if you will. I wish I still had one, don't you? But you always want to try to close for that appointment. But if that's not possible, don't worry. We've got more in play for you. You make that initial contact. And again, some will, some won't. So what? Only one's going to say yes out of the 10 that you talk to. So don't take it personally, and don't be afraid to pick up that phone. And if you employ this sentence that says, some will, some won't, so what? You'll be much more effective on the telephone because you won't be calling with 
a preconceived notion that they're going to say yes. We have scripts for you that are available on AnnieMacWorks.com. There are opening lines and if I could would use that are available. And then step three will be prepare and personalize your follow-up materials at all at one time. What? Mm-hmm. We want you to enter the prospect into your follow-up grid and schedule your, schedule your follow-up. Now, if you've seen our class about hiring a personal assistant and managing a personal assistant, you'll understand that these tasks for this for sale by owner, other than the phone call and the personal contacts, every bit of it could be done by either a part-time employee, a full-time employee, or a piecemeal employee. So, use a technology-based schedule reminder or CRM like Outlook or Franklin Covey. Schedule an exact time and date that you're going to do it and protect that time with time blocking. Tell as many people as you can that you're going to do it and when you're going to do it. So when you're scheduling yourself to make these phone calls, we want you to block that time off. And we don't want you to answer the phone for your wife or husband that says, hey, can you take the dog to get groomed? Because you're a real estate agent. You don't work. We want you to protect it. And we want you to block that time. Or you can pay someone else to do it for you, as I mentioned with the personal assistant conversation. So let's get into the meat of the matter. Protecting that time. I want you to schedule a piece, a block of time, inside of your outlook that protects you from the elements. And I want you to write this in every single time. Assign this protected time to complete my evil marketing and follow-up. But it's not enough to just write that. I want you to reiterate to yourself that if you spend $5 per FISBO and set aside three hours per week, you can convert one out of ten FISBOs. Remind yourself of that so that when you're setting that side of time, setting that time aside, you remember why you're doing it and why it's so important for you to protect it. See, 10 new Ebol contacts per month equals 120 new contacts per year, which will convert to 12 listings, which then convert to 6 solds. That's some math that is very conservative. So if you have an average GCI of $5,000 for those six, that will convert into an extra $30,000 in GCI from that source of business. I'm going to go on a little aside right now and tell you that inside of your business planning, you have different sources of business. If you choose to institute Ebol as one of those sources, I don't want you to try it for a week, make 10 contacts, and then say, ah, that doesn't work. I promise you it does. And with the items that I'm going to show you here today, you'll see how. So you'll reschedule that to set that time aside, all that good stuff, and your phone, your calendar, your computer will help you to remember, as well as those people that you shared with. So now I'm going to go into screen share, and I'm going to show you how to edit the letters that you'll need in order to create this follow-up system.
Is everybody with me so far? The first thing that I'm going to show you is where to get these documents. So if you go to AnnieMacWorks.com and you go to the toolbar that says Class Materials and go down to Ebel and click on it, you'll see that Ebel, the Ebel website, has all of the documents for you to download. So it has letter 1, letter 2, letter 3. It also has a PDF sample of the same. So letter 1 is in Publisher. Letter 1 PDF sample will show you in case you can't use Publisher so that you can see it. It has the email that you need. So all you have to do is copy, edit, and paste. Email 2. Your scripts are available there. The spreadsheet is available there for you so that you can enter in those contacts. And then the Ebol sample contract with highlights so that you, when you make that appointment and you let them know that you're there to be in service with them and you're letting them know, hey, when you are getting ready to write that contract, these are the things that you should uh, be, be mindful of. These are the things that some for sale by owners get caught up in. We also have some brochures that you can take. So I have all of those open at the bottom of my screen and I'm going to take you through each of those items and show you how to use it. So if you take a look here at this FISBO letter number one, we need to edit this so that it doesn't have our picture and it doesn't have our name. In the upper right hand corner, if you want to maximize your screen, that would be helpful to you at this time. So this letter has a picture. It has a little blurb at the top that gets them to read further. It also has your name and then it's very specifically laid out for a purpose and I'll get to that purpose in a minute when we're all done with showing you how to edit but in order to edit this picture it is super simple all I want you to do is highlight it by clicking on it there will be dots that form around the picture you see there are no dots now because I just clicked off of it now I'm going to click on it and the dots appear you're going to right click, go up to change picture, and click on change picture. You're going to tell it that you want to find the picture because you have your professional picture from a file and hopefully you know where you've saved it. And you're going to find your photo and then simply say insert. So now it's replaced this is funny guys that I'm going to move it here just so you can see that was me 10 years ago this is me today what a difference huh I grew some hair sorry I just needed to show you that I'll move it back now so it changes out the picture you simply have to highlight the one that you took out and delete it. Now you've changed your picture inside of this document. Obviously, you're going to change the name by simply highlighting and typing. So you would highlight and type. Now, let's take a look 
and an easier and more efficient way to change your name. If you go to Find and Replace, you can search for words inside the document and then replace them with different words. So in this letter it references Broward County. Well, I don't want it to say Broward, West Broward County. So I'm going to copy West Broward County and I'm going to paste it in the search for bar. Then I'm going to type in Maricopa, which is a county in Arizona. And I'm going to tell it to replace where it says West Broward County, every single place in the document, with Maricopa. It says, we've reached the end of the selection. Do you want us to continue searching the rest of it? Yes, of course I do. And it's now replaced West Broward with Maricopa everywhere that West Broward appeared in this letter. So you simply read through it and make sure that you change everything that you need that's specific to, you know, you. And I want you to understand that you can then save this letter as either a PDF or you can print it. But once you print it, because you're going to mail this, this is an actual stamp. What do stamps cost these days? I'm not even sure anymore. But you're going to put an actual physical, like, peel off the paper stamp. Imagine what we used to have to do when we used to have to lick them and put them on. But you guys just get to peel and paste. And you're going to fold this letter out. What do I mean by that? You're going to tri-fold it like you would to put in a regular letter size envelope and you're going to have the picture and the blurb facing out. So all the words are going to be out. And you're going to insert that into a white envelope with your picture and that blurb. The way that it sits inside of that envelope facing the flap. The reason that that is, and the reason that this letter is set up the way that it is, is set up so that they can, we can catch the reader's eye. We can catch the possible for sale by owner or our new client. We can catch their eye. We have about four seconds. So they're going to open the letter. And the reason they're going to open the letter is because you are going to hand address it in blue ink on the outside. So they're going to think that it's something personal, and then it's going to be you. But that blurb is going to catch their attention enough that they're going to read. And then they're going to get to that first line that will hopefully get them to read the next paragraph. Then they'll catch the next line, which will hopefully get them to read the next paragraph and so on and so forth, until they finally get to the end of that letter and hopefully give you a call. So it's a very simple process to edit that letter up. Let me show you something else that you might be able to bring with you on the personal drop-off that you guys discussed on Monday. This is a sample of a brochure. You can search for a monument sign for a neighborhood if that neighborhood has it, or if it's listed on a bio website, there will be pictures of that property on the website. So you simply employ the same techniques that I showed you in changing pictures in the letter in order to change the pictures in this. So you'll right click and you'll say change picture and you'll change the picture, picture from that monument sign 
to a different one that you may want to use. So I'm just going to choose any picture and show you that when you click it, it replaces it. Very impressive when you have this in your initial meeting. So take the time to edit it and take the time to print it and cut it and bring it in its entirety. Don't print it and then not cut it, guys. This is a square brochure that needs to be brought to them square. So let me show you, I'm going to delete this real quick. Let me show you that if you have a property that has five numbers, something's going to happen here. So let's say it's one, two, five, seven, eight, seven. Only four are going to show up. So I want you to go into that document or that section and push control A. I don't want you to select it with your mouse. I want you to go in, let me show you again, click anywhere inside the box and push control A. Because if you simply select it, you're only going to select four numbers instead of the fifth. And you'll have to do the work twice. If you do control A, then you'll get everything that's inside of that box. Then I want you to go to the down arrow, the A with the down arrow. And I want you to click on it as many times as it takes until the fifth number shows up. Now you have all five numbers inside of that text box, as it's called, inside of Publisher. Now it's a little high for my liking. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't fit properly in that box anymore. So I'm simply going to take my mouse and I'm going to hover over the center dot that's actually squares and I'm going to make it be right on top of that. So those are just some tips and tricks that you can use inside of Publisher. Publisher is really fun to work inside because it makes you look like you are a graphic designer without having to go to graphic designer school. It uses all of the different parts and pieces of Word and it uh, gives you the ability to move things around like you can't do inside of Word. So with that being said, you would simply save and print and bring this with you inside of your specific drop-off that you've created. I'm now going to take you back to the Animac Works website and show you that if you have not already signed up for my work suite through your lending partner, you can click here on the Start Today. If you have, you can go to the Realtor login and log in. I'm going to go there now and hopefully haven't been logged out since we've been on and show you why I'm telling you this. I want you to go down to Manage Your Listings. When you click on Manage Listings, you're going to have a few different options. You're going to have public websites and you're going to have private websites. Well, when you're using this tool, this technology, in order to gain a listing, you would hit New Demo Listing. So now you're going to type in the address Oops. And welcome home. And see this box here? It says check this box if you do not want this address to be displayed on your website. Well, you don't want it there yet because it's not yours. And you're going to click Next. 
So this will allow you to choose a single property website that you can create as proof to this buyer, I mean, excuse me, to the seller that you are going to be the best possible person for this job and that they could not possibly do what you do. So you'll select this property website and click Next. And then you'll be able to upload property info. So you can put in some information, some features, some benefits. You can upload some pictures. And you can do, you can put in the price that you think that this is going to sell for or the price that they have, depending on how you sell. So you would put in all of that information and create a sample property website for them. It's a very simple and self explanatory process. So when you click on it, it says this website is in demo mode so that you're sure to understand that this isn't one that you're going to be able to use, right? At this time. But see, we didn't put photos in, so it's there. But look, it's a, going to be a complete property website when you do all of the uh, addition of the pictures and such. So with that being said, I highly recommend that you email this web address inside of one of your emails that you use when you're in your CRM process. So see email one, email two. Simply add that section or that email, or that, I'm sorry, web address by copying it and pasting it into that email so that they can understand that you will do the job better than them, getting them the highest possible price for the least amount of money, for the most amount of money, for the least amount of days on the market. My goodness, I'm having trouble speaking today. Understand that using all of these different parts and pieces is so important in the process. However, it will return you a dollar for every dime that you spend. As an aside, I want to show you what Russ has done with our Annie Mac Works page on Facebook. He is initiating a 70-day challenge. So what I'll ask you to do is go to Facebook and like us as Annie Mac Works so that you can get information and then post on Annie Mac Works that says, hey, I contacted Seven and I got a listing using the Ebol follow-up system. Report to us. Let us know what's going on. But let's look at the 70-day challenge as five extra listings in the next two months. Could that do something for your bottom line? I'm pretty sure that when I was riding that bicycle through that neighborhood and I saw those two for sale by owners, I'm so confident in it, I'm pretty sure that we would have at least listed one of the two. The Ebol follow-up system is systematic 
and it's simple. And we love to hear feedback on it. So we went over the letters. The email is simple. You just copy and paste, so I'm not going to show you how to use that. You know how to write, and we hope that you will hand write your specific note one and your specific note two. But when you are doing your specific note one, we want you to have buyer side info. We want you to include a mortgage reference for them. Because they're selling their home, they're going to need to purchase another one. Maybe some destination properties. If you happen to attend, have happened to attended our customer first or plan on it, we will go heavily into destination properties and why they're so important to include in your specific drop-offs. These letters are easily editable. You simply replace the subdivision names with yours, handwrite these, and do them all at once. Stick them in a tickler to be mailed or emailed. You know what? With your emails, you can even schedule them inside of Outlook so that it automatically sends. For that specific drop-off, you're going to download that one that is highlighted. Your good faith estimates, property brochures, title company references, and mortgage company references. See, all of these different things in a systematized manner will change your bottom line. Please remember that all of the documents and your ability to sign up for your single property websites if you haven't already done so and the ability to log in to your single property, web, your single property website uh, suite, My Work Suite, is all available on AnnieMacWorks.com. Please visit AnnieMacWorks.com forward slash ebull to download any of the materials that we've spoken to, that I have spoken to you about here today. Remember, 10 contacts equal one listing. And we're asking you to spend a dime to make a dollar. Thanks for joining me today on Ebull, Every Buy Owner Lists, brought to you by Annie Mac Works.